good God. Would you stand to your feet and welcome my dear, lovely wife of 35 years, going on 36. She's the executive pastor of this ministry. Her name is Lynette Roberts, and she's going to minister the word of life to you this morning. Amen. It is a tremendous honor. It was too far down. Did that turn me up then? <laughs> All right. Is it on? Uh -huh. I, you can hear? I can, I can barely hear me. Okay. All right. I'm going to get this. Um, and, you know, I get kind of nervous talking to everybody because, uh, for one thing, it's the first time for me talking since we moved to the hotel. Uh, actually getting the opportunity to minister to, to everybody. I, I used to uh, do it regularly on Wednesday night and uh, and I so enjoy teaching. I am not the preacher. I am not going to hoop and holler. Uh, I get we, we get a little excited but uh, I'm not, I probably won't do a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, preaching. Uh, I'm a teacher. So if you have a Bible that's a good thing with me. Um, if you have a notepad and a pencil, anybody that used to be on my Wednesday night <laughs> services knew that was the rule, that we had something to write with. I'm going to give you lots of definition, lots of scripture, and um, we're going to get busy. Because if we don't have understanding, we have nothing. We just, we just go through motions. We're just doing a little something, something on a Sunday. And Black Point Christian Faith Center doesn't do a little something, something. We want you to leave here empowered and with the ability and to go forth and do amazing things for God. And because there's something on the inside of you that God's trying to get out of you. And we're going to make sure we get it out of you. We're going to push you over the edge. and Because most of us are right there on the edge. Right. right there, right there, right there, waiting to, to go to that next level, yeah. and yet we're, we're fearful because we think that we can't handle it. But God says, the greater one lives and abides on the inside of you. You can handle it. You can do it. Um, we're going to talk about vision. Uh, we're going to eventually, we're gonna, I'm going to use life life point to face of vision to talk about it, but without vision, people perish. Uh, people have no hope and they have they wander around and they're hopeless a lot of times and they go in circles because they have nothing to go forward to forward and they don't even they don't know where they're going and so we want to make sure you know where you're going um, quickly Pastor Tommy and I knew we needed direction um, from God this is from God. And we have, all of a sudden we had a church in Iowa, and we didn't even know where Iowa was. And it was, it, it was such a whirlwind event that happened in our lives. We were living in Texas, starting a ministry in Texas, just left our, our, the ministry that we had been a part of for six years, and we were active in our ministry, and all of a sudden, uh, it, it seemed like all hell broke loose. In, in 2008, our life was a mess, and it was crazy. And um, I won't go into all the details. Some of you know all the details. And but I just was lost. I became this, you know, this totally not knowing where my direction was. I we thought we had a vision that it was going to be there in Texas, and then all of a sudden everything else changed. And we got a phone call. We got a phone call from a friend of ours, and he said, why don't you come to Iowa? And why don't you come and just help me with the ministry that 
that God's placed in our heart. And everything was so falling apart in our life back then until it looked like a ray of hope. And so we grabbed hold of the ray of hope. And we, it pulled us to Iowa. And we really thought we were going back to Texas. And then all of a sudden, the pastor left. <laughs> and left us with the church. And we're like, okay, all right, well, what do we do with this? And, and quickly God said, you do, you do exactly what I have born you to do. I've placed so much in you over the last, probably at that point, probably about 20 years. You know, I placed, well, probably about 18. I put so much in you. I prepared you for such a time as this. And I had just gotten a kidney transplant from my son David, who, who blessed me uh, with a kidney. And we went through that together. And I tell you, uh, I was amazed at the amount of strength that God gave me. Right, I mean, it was a month after I had the transplant, we became pastors. And, and so the strength that he gave me to be able to endure and to be able to begin to start a ministry with about 13 people. <laughs> and we went from a house full to, oh, you know, just 13 people. It was amazing what God was doing. And, and he began to restructure. So, what I guess I want to ask you, God said, get my vision and make it plain so that those that read it will, be, will, will want to understand and run with it and support it. So we had to come up with a vision. I do not have one of my vision cards with me. Just, amazingly, I don't have a vision card with me. Thank you, Kelsey. <laughs> We came up with this vision card and with these five vision points. And so what I'm going to do for the next month is I'm going to go over these points again. Because some of you have heard it before and some of you have not. I want everyone to clearly understand why life won't exist. And a lot of times you come into churches and you don't really know why you're there. And you don't really understand the importance of your your place in that place, in, in the church. And we want to transform your mind into thinking and understanding why you are such an important part. Even if you just walk through the doors, even if this is your first time here, you are you have you have latched hold of our heart and and we don't even know your name yet. Because we see your face, and there's such a great opportunity to be able to show you who you are. Because God called us to show people who they are. Proverbs 29 and 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, or they cast off restraint. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. A person that knows where they're going is confident. A people, a person that is going in the direction in which God has already called them to go, and he keeps his eye and focus on what God has called them to do, can confidently and joyfully be able to go forward. That's why with Jesus he says, for the joy, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross because he fully understood his his, his place. He fully understood the vision that he, and the reasoning of why he exists. So if we are not walking in a place where we fully understand why we exist, we'll continue to be discontented. We'll continue to, to struggle with every day. And if, if we don't realize who we are, we're going to always continue to struggle. So we want you to, to come to a better knowledge. The questions we ask ourselves as a people is why am I here? Why am I here? What is my purpose? How did this all begin and how does this all end? And what do I have to do with it all? 
Yeah. Have you ever asked yourself that? Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you are a Christian, you're, you're going to ask yourself that at some point. You're going to say, I don't, I, I mean, I see everything going on around me, but I don't know why, why I'm here. I see everything happening, but I'm not quite sure what my purpose is in all of this. And so if we don't fully understand our purpose, just like Pastor Tommy was saying about the job, you know, your job is not to, to give you, to, to, to be your source. Your job is a place to be an influence. Your, your job is a place to, to, to begin to minister through your life. You don't have to talk about Jesus every day. Come on now. But just being a light to, to the people that are around you, to be an encouragement, to be a light of love and compassion and understanding and mercy to people that are going through. I mean, and and that's that's why we're here. It says, this is the take home point I want you to take home. And I want you to write it down, guys. All right, this is the take home point. There is a greater you on the inside of you. There is a greater you on the inside of you. One of the things that Satan tries to do in our life is to keep us as ignorant as possible on who we are and the greater purpose that we have on the inside of us. He wants you ignorant. He doesn't want you to understand who you are. He doesn't want you to understand that you have power in your in your words and in your voice. He wants you to be as quiet as possible. He wants you to be as insignificant as possible. He wants you to be put in a closet and shut up as much as possible. And what we have to be is bold in our faith and bold in who we are. And when we really realize that we are children of the Most High God and that the greater one abides on the inside of us, and that there's power in what I say and what I do, then you begin to, to begin to be very uh, understanding who you are. You begin to um, be careful with your words. You begin, you'll be careful with your attitude. You'll think about it a little bit more. You know, because I'm influencing people here. So I, I, I need to be careful how my face looks. I need to be careful how my body language is. I need to be careful if my words are a little harsh or a little, 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 you know, biting. I'm going to bite my body today, you know. And so you have to be careful. And so you, be, you begin to do that because you recognize who you are. And Because when we don't know who we are, we don't care. We don't care if we hurt somebody's feelings. We don't care if we, if we, if we just say oh, anything off. Tired of being broke, man. I'm broke all the time. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That's not funny. <laughs> That's not funny. It's not funny because you're 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 actually creating what you don't want to be. Right. 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 Boy, I mean, stop saying that. And so now you become uh, aware of your words. You start to become aware of your of your of your of your life. You you're starting to become aware because you have purpose. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Many times we say to ourselves, why did I go five steps forward and eight steps backwards? <laughs> yeah, you know, laugh because it's true, man. Yeah. It's like man, I feel like I've made I made such strides. And then all of a sudden I find myself further back than what I thought. You know, and I'm like, what is going on? Most of the time, we're trying, because we're trying to do it. We haven't really casted the care over our God. We really haven't. We're trying to make this thing happen. We're, we're working our hardest to try to make this thing happen. And God's saying, no, just, just, just rest. Rest in me. Not be lazy. But rest in me. Listen to my voice. Follow my lead. Don't get in front of me. This is most of the time we're trying to do it. And God has the success plan. God has given us his road to success. And guess what? It's in the book. Everything we need, everything we need for raising our children to, to making money, to, 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 to buying houses, to, to doing all these different things, it's in the book. Everything is 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 in the book. 
Everything is in the book. Let's go to Joshua 1 and 8. I need for you to go with me there. Amen. Praise God. It's very important that we understand that God has given us great instruction. And he's given us a wonderful roadmap to success if we follow it. It says, this book of the law, Joshua 1 and 8, this is the English Standard Version. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. That sounds pretty important, doesn't it? Yeah. Sounds pretty direct. If he said it to Joshua, he's saying it to you. It's the same rules. It's the same, it's the same rules. It says, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. So that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it, and then you will make your way prosperous. There's a roadmap. There's a suggestion. Actually, it's more than a suggestion, it's a command. God makes very few suggestions. He is trying to tell you something. That your life success is in the book. Yes. That we keep it before our eyes. That we keep it in the midst of our hearts. That we keep it before us so that we will be successful. But what did he do? He said to, it to come out of your what? Out of your mouth. Stop trying to silently do this thing. Right, right. Somewhere along the line in our religious circles, somebody told us it was really cute to be quiet. And then it looked really, really kind of weird to be a little loud. But I don't see that in the book. I don't know who told them that. I don't know why they told them that. Because I guess it just looked better. You look kind of reserved and you look... You look really important. But it's more important to make sure that you are saying the stuff out of your mouth and getting it way out there so that all the heaven can hear you and all the hell can hear you. And to recognize your authority in your mouth and begin to say something. But you make sure, and you're careful, right? You're careful to say the right words. And it's God's words. It's in the book. God gave us two direct commandments to follow. Two. Two. It doesn't seem hard, does it? It's two, guys. Two. Two. One, two. For our success and our victory in everything. In everything. Go to Mark 12 with me. Mark 12, 30 and 31. Mark 12, 30 and 31. I'm going to read out of the Amplified Version. And you shall love the Lord your God out of and with your whole heart and out of and with all your soul your life and out of and with all your mind with your faculty of thought and your moral understanding out of and with all your strength this is the first and principal commandment I like the amplifier. Yes. It kind of, it kind of just, it kind of digs a little harder, doesn't it? It kind of punches you a little bit harder. Gets your attention. Yes. Out of and with all. Out of and with all. Nothing should divide you from the work. Amen. Nothing should divide you from your love for the Father. Nothing. Do you hear me? Not your children. 
Not your children. Amen. Not your, not your, not your, not your job. Not, nothing, nothing with all of your strength, with all of your mind, with all of your heart. Everything should love God. Guess what? You can't love God if you don't spend no time with God. If you don't know nothing about him, if you know zero about him, guess what? You can't love him. How can you love him and you don't know him? Oh, by mental ascent? Oh, I mentally love you. It doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. In any other relationship, we don't fall in love just because I see you. Just because I see you. Come on. I got to spend time with you. I got to get to know you. And even then, sometimes I don't like you. <laughs> so I have to get to really know you to love you. Beyond the fact that I may not like you sometimes. That's true. Spend time with God. God wants to spend time with you. He loves you. He loves you because he knew you before the foundation of the world. He knew you. He knew you. Know him. Find him. Search for him. Make sure you pursue him with the greatness of, 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 of diligence that I am going to get you. Because getting God is the most important thing you're going to ever do in your life. So go get him. Go find him. Go search for him. Go and, and spend time with him when you do. God, I want to know you. I want to know you in the power of your resurrection. I want to know you. How you're in your suffering. I want to know you in all of it. I don't want to just know you in the good times. I want to know you in the bad times. I want to know you when it's hard out here. Well, it's easy to know him when you when it's good. But I wanna know I wanna know you when it's bad. When things are rough, when things are I'm struggling. Say that. That's right. That's right. Good teaching. And that's the sad thing is that we don't really search for him until we're struggling. That's right. We gotta we gotta we gotta we gotta get it together, guys. We gotta we gotta do this better so that we will get good success. So that we will we we're gonna have victory. We're gonna be victorious in every area. Every area of our lives. Number two. Number two. The second is like it. And it is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. There's no other, there's none greater than this. God just nailed it down to two. If we can do these, we have, we have, we have fulfilled the law. We have fulfilled what is necessary to be successful. And to get it right. I like, I like to say it this way. Love people like Christ loved us. Because guess what? A lot of times we don't love ourselves. We don't love ourselves, so therefore we treat people badly. Because we don't even like ourselves. So I don't want to treat people like I like like I do myself. Because sometimes I treat myself really bad. I'm on me. I'm judgmental of me. I'm, I'm, I'm always harder on me than I'm on anybody else. So that means I'm going to get hard on you. And that's not love. So I gotta love people like Christ loved me. He's my example. He's the one that I'm looking to and I'm going, okay, oh, this is how I do it. This is how I do it. Okay, okay, I got it, God. I got it. First definition. What is a divine commandment? What is a divine commandment? What is a commandment from God? It is a divine rule. An eternal rule it is not a natural rule. All right. Technology. Hallelujah. An eternal rule. It is designing our eternal destiny. Whenever God is giving us a commandment from the Word of God, he is literally designing our eternal destiny. 
Because what he's saying, if you follow this, then this is going to happen. This is what's going to follow if you do this. So I'm showing you how to get to your destiny the way I intend for you to get to your destiny. So he's trying to tell you something. So it's really important to perk up your ears and listen and begin to digest that thing into your spirit. It's not about a hammer or even hell. Right, right. God's not about a hammer or hell. The last thing he wants you to do is go to hell. That's why he sent his son Jesus. Isn't that good? That's good news. That's why we need to be about good news. Yes. Not just preaching about hell. But we're preach we want to preach about the good news that Jesus came to keep you from hell. And to keep you out of hell. It's about love and respect. It's about honor and devotion to the one and only true God. When we realize that there's no other gods around, that there's no other gods to be to be to, to go around with. I mean to, to, to begin to uh, give our hearts to. Because I know you don't want to think this, but money is a God. Money, when, God, when money starts ruling you and telling you what to do, uh, it, start, it's, 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 it becomes a God to us. When we spend more time with our cars than we do with God, if we spend more time on the internet than we do with God, come on, a lot of things can start to become idols to us and become gods to us. A lot of things. So we have to keep a balance, a balance in our life. And the only person that can do that is the Holy Spirit. Amen. The only person. And you've got to be listening, constantly listening to his voice and listening to his direction so that he will tell you where to go, how to go, how much time you need to be spending with that. But I know that he told you to stop doing it. <laughs> and whether it's too much chocolate or whether it's whatever, I know he told you to stop it. And he said, oh, you need to be spending some more time with me. I know he told you. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's about a father's love. It's about a child's love for a father. It's about saying thank you for never giving up on us. Whenever I think about that, how many times God could have gave up and said, look, I'm <laughs> let's just scratch this. This ain't working. <laughs> we, we need to do now. Do over. Do over. You know, but he didn't. He didn't. Because of whatever man there was, whether it was Noah or Abraham or somebody, there was somebody out there that cried out to God and said, no, here I am, God. Is it you? Is it you crying out saying, here I am, God. Here I am, God. Don't destroy everybody. <laughs> because he can. <laughs> he can, but he won't. Isn't that awesome? Oh, when I think about the goodness and the love of God, it just it just makes me weep because I think, wow, you didn't have to do it, but you did it for me. You did it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And all we ask for you is to love God and to love others. Just like Christ loved us. Hallelujah. But it is necessary when we begin to watch the story and allow Jesus to be our great example and humble ourselves under his hand, he will show us how to love if we want to know. A lot of the times we don't want to know. We're so, we're so wrapped up in our world, in our bitterness, in our anger, in our disappointments, and all these different things. My attitude is just the way I've been all my life. God's still at work with me. Come on now. He's still working on you? <laughs> He's still working? I get it. He's going to be working on us in the day we see Jesus. I get it. 
Ma voi cani vi vendere adesso? No, voi! Jesus excellently represented the Father and the Kingdom. He recognized who he was and studied and spent time in prayer with the Father. The more he spent time with the Father and the Word, his destiny became clearer and clearer. Amen. And yours will too. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. The more time you spend with the one that loves you and the one that you love, your destiny is going to become clearer and clearer and clearer. Your, your, your vision is going to become so crystal clear in your life. And so you got to spend time with him. You always will begin to do the same. Spend time with the Father. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2 and 15. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. I'm going to read out of the Amplified Version. We're going to work on that, guys, to get y'all more versions. You're a pro presenter. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 15 says, study and be eager. Do your utmost to present yourself to God. Approved and tested by trial. A workman who has no cause to be ashamed. Correctly analyzing and accurately dividing. Rightly. Rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Amen. Amen. That's how we do it. We have to get into the presence of God and begin to study. That's why I have so many definitions. Because I want to be able to clearly understand what the word of God is telling me. I don't want to just blow over it like it's just another verse. Right. Because there's more inside of it yes. than, than we realize. There's a deeper knowledge and a deeper place of revelation that's inside the verse that I, I have to, I want to tap into. I want to tap into the fullness of what God is trying to tell me. And then I want to meditate on it so that I can begin to digest it into my spirit and begin to allow it to change me. Not only just change my, 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 my spirit, but I want it to change my mind. I want it to change my body. I want it to change everything about me as I begin to study out the Word of God. But that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. Let's talk about vision. Habakkuk 2 and 2 through 3 in God's Word translation. So the Lord answered. Then the Lord answered me, write the vision. Make it clear on tablets so that anyone can read it clearly. The vision will still happen at the appointed time. It hurries toward its goal. As soon as you set your heart to do it, it's hurrying toward you. And it won't be a lie. If it's delayed, wait for it. It will certainly happen. It won't be late. It won't be late. It's not going to disappoint. It's going to come when it's supposed to come. Wait for it. Have patience for it. Recognize that God knows the timing. He knows the place. He knows how to get it to you, when to get it to you. You just need to be patient and know that it's on its way. It's not going to tarry when it's time. That's right. It's not. The first vision of my point is to be a ministry of excellence, properly, properly reflecting the image of Christ. Let's define ministry. I like to define the ministry here. That's what I'm going to define today. The ministry here is a place 
where the gospel of Jesus Christ is ministered and nothing else is going to be ministered. It's not going to be about Buddha. It ain't going to be about Muhammad. Except that those are different types of religions. But there's only one true God. And he is God Almighty. He is the I am. The I am. And nothing's going to change that. And Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father except by him. So Jesus Christ is the place that ministry is here. A place where lives are going to change. And they are going to learn that life can begin again. No mistake. It's too big or unforgivable. Amen. A lot of people think that I made such huge mistakes. I'm even making a mistake right now. <laughs> right now, I'm like smacking the dab of a huge mistake. <laughs> Glory to God. So what? All of us have little mistakes sometimes. But once we learn how to cry out to Jesus and learn that he is the one that forgives and he is the one. He was our great example. We'll get into that a little bit too. Amen. A place where the word of faith is taught to bring success to each life and each child as they walk out their covenant with God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to teach you the word of faith. That without faith, come on, we can't please God. If we don't trust and believe Him, then we can't please Him. So it's important that we build our faith, know that our faith has got to be uh, built upon and it's got to get stronger so that we will know exactly who we are and we will know exactly who He is. Let's define excellence. Excellence. I like this one. As I began to study this one out, I was like, wow, that's cool. I like that. I'm telling you guys, it brings such revelation as you define some of the words that God has placed in the Word. It says, the quality of being outstanding or extremely good is distinctive. Excellence is distinctive. Excellence is a quality, a superiority, a brilliance, a greatness, merit, high caliber, exuberance, I'm sorry, eminence, preeminence, supremacy, skill, talent, accomplishment, and mastery. We got something to live up to, don't we? God said it. We just listen. That's right. That's right. To be a ministry of excellence. Come on. Excellence. I, I, I looked at that word superiority and I thought, it's not about being better than somebody else. It's about representing the king. That's right. yeah. And everything that he puts his hand to do is superior. Yeah. It's superior in every aspect. So why should we look like that? We should look like we are a quality ministry. That we are a ministry of great caliber. And that we have talent and skill and accomplishment. And not only that, but mastery in everything we put our hands to do. Amen. Everything. Everything. Let's look at reflection. Reflection. I know these guys are trying to get it up on the board for you. So you can write stuff down and Get a, get, a, get a seat in your heart recognize what this first vision point is and recognizing what ministry are you a part of. Amen. What ministry? What, what is this ministry? Or even if you're new here, what is this ministry? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. A reflection. We want to be a reflection of Jesus Christ. It says a transformation of a figure in which each point is replaced, come on, replaced by a point symmetric 
with respect to a to a line or plane. I know that sounds real scientific, doesn't it? <laughs> like, oh, come on, Pastor. <laughs> All right. I want my life to be symmetrical to the life of Christ. I want it to so line up with what he looks like that somebody's going to say, wow, you look just like Jesus. Amen. You know I'm going to tell the regular story. We, uh, we were at our last church uh, at Heritage of Faith in Texas and, and there was an uh, African-American uh, usher and he used to usher the side that we were on. And we were youth pastors at the time and so they would help usher us to the front front row and uh, Pastor Tommy was doing announcements at the time. <laughs> We've come a long way, a long way. And so he says, uh, every time, every time I walk in, and I can't remember him ever saying that about anybody else, but every time I walk in, he would say, here comes Jesus. <laughs> and I was, the first time I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh my goodness, no, he's man did not just call me Jesus. Oh, oh my goodness, he did not call me Jesus. How loud are you now, I don't know how many y'all know African men can be a little loud. Oh, but we got something to shout out. What'd you say? We got a We got a shame to shout. Amen. Every time I came in that sanctuary, he would say that. And so the Lord told me, why are you ashamed of that? She got me so checked. Oh my goodness. I said, well, Lord, you know, I'm not you. He says, you're not. I said, I'm beginning to wonder now if I'm you. <laughs> As he said, it's a asking me, I'm not. And I'm like, you are my feet. You are my hands. You are my voice in the earth. That is the highest compliment that anybody can give you is that you look just like Jesus. It is. It is the highest compliment. And, and so if anybody says, man, there's something about you. There's something about you when you walk into the room, everything changes. There's something about you that, that whenever you talk, this 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 warmth and this 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 peace comes over me. And I just want you to talk some more because you just you just you just you just right. They can't even put words to it because they can't even understand it. And so don't ever feel disappointed or feel confused or feel uh, I don't know like you don't deserve that that's what we want we want to look just like Jesus we want people to say Jesus is just walking into the building <laughs> what does it look like watch what he does watch what Jesus does guess what you gotta read the book you, you gotta read the book to you know what Jesus does okay Say the things that he would say. And react the way he would react. Man, that would change your whole life. I mean, think about it. If you were to think about your reaction, just like we talked about when we first started, if you thought about your reaction and thought about your body language and your facial expressions and, your, and the words that come out of your mouth and all those kind of things, I'm telling you, if... You, 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 you're going to change. You're going to change. I must watch the story over and over and over to understand the man. Hallelujah. I'm going to go back to my paper. Understand the man, Christ Jesus. Not the Savior, but the man. He became to be an example to us as a man, that's right. not as a savior. That's right. So that's why we can watch that story and we can be just like him. Amen. We can be just like Jesus. Amen. Say it with me. I can be, I can be just, like Jesus. just like Jesus. 
One more time. I can be, I can be just like Jesus. Some of y'all don't look of this. Man, but that's okay. Because I'm going to keep telling you. You can be just like Jesus. You actually already a Jesus man or woman. You already are. You just got to get it together. Right? You just got to get some things lined up. Symmetrical. Right? <laughs> Symmetrical. Did he fear or did he have faith? Example, when he recognized his destiny to the cross, he did not have fear. He had faith that for the joy that was set before him, he endured that cross. Amen? Did he respond in anger or love? What about the mockings and the beatings? And the soldiers began to hurt him and, and whip him with, a, with, with, with whips and and, and different things what, what, and slapped him in his face. Did he did he not love them still? On the, on, the, on the cross, I mean, and nailed him to the cross and he's bleeding and he, and he, and he, and he says, hey, forgive them. forgive them. Come on. They don't know what they're doing, God. They don't even know who I am. Uh, oh, my goodness. Did he hurt or did he heal? Heal. He went about doing good and healing all, come on, all those who were oppressed of the devil. All. Did he tear down or did he build up? Build up. Says the woman at the well. And the woman that committed adultery. He could have condemned her. Condemned them. He could have condemned them. I mean, they were clearly in the wrong. Clearly in the wrong. He was the only one with a woman who committed adultery that could have stoned her to death. Yeah. But he did not. Because he chose to build up instead of tear down. Did he help or did he walk away? Says the man at the pool of Bethesda. He can, I mean, he gave so many excuses. Trying to tell Jesus why he healed. <laughs> but he didn't care. He said, get up. Take your bed and walk. Stop making excuses. Stop, 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 stop staying by the pool. Still, still struggling with the same thing you've been struggling with for the last what, 28 years? Right. 28 years? 28 years, guys? Ah, how about you been dealing? It's time to get better. Yes. Time to get better. Take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must stay mindful to respond like Jesus. We make mistakes. We better believe it. We will and we do. We're going to keep making mistakes, but who in the Bible didn't? Right, right. Isn't that encouraging? Right. Isn't that cool? Right. Yeah, you look at David and Abraham and all them guys, them pillars of faith. Yeah. <laughs> and all the mistakes they made, I'm like, yeah, I'm in there. I can do this. I can do this. God loves me too. God loves me too. Though a righteous man falls, Seven times, he'll yeah. get up again. Yeah. Yeah. He'll get up again. Yeah. You gotta get up again. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many times you fall. Yeah. It really doesn't. Right. Only thing that matters is that you don't get up. Right, right, right. Or you keep going around in the same circle, the same same mess that you've been in, wallowing in the same yeah. stuff. Uh -huh. You're greater than that. There's a greater, greater one on the inside of you. Yeah. Yeah. There is a greater one on the inside of you. Hallelujah. What is the image of Jesus Christ? What is that image that we're longing to look like? It's a love personified. It is the compassion of God. It is the strength of a master soldier. The strength of a master soldier. Unwavering determination. I'm not giving up. 
I'm not gonna. We watch this uh, this TV show. Ooh, you know, uh, for, uh, Sanford's son. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Sanford's son. Oh, we're watching Sanford's son. This is this episode. <laughs> oh, right, where these uh, young ladies uh, are getting ready to perform at one of the nightclubs, and he really liked them. She was. They were really so sweet to him, and he. And uh, but his son told him he couldn't go. He said, "Pop." <laughs> You can't go. You can't go. Why don't you just stay home? He says, no, I want to go. And he's like, no, Pop, can't, you can't go. He says, why can't I go? I want to go. And so he's like, Pop, you can't go. So he walked away. And he looked with his pouty face and he said, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. That's how I feel. I got a determination. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. You can tell me I can't go. You can tell me I'm not good enough. You can tell me I don't have what it takes to be all that God has I'm going. 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 i Extreme focus. Jesus had extreme focus on the Father. He made time for him. He made sure that he had his Father time. Because he knew he had to get, he had to get commanding orders from the commander himself. He knew that I can't, I can't say anything I want to say. I can't do anything I want to do. I got to do it the way God says do it. I, I, better not, I better not step, I better not go because it's not the way God told me to do it. So he had a wavering determination and extreme focus. Amazing wisdom that is tapped into by God the Father. The only way we get wisdom is through God. We can try these men's ways of doing things and trying to solve our problems. But I'm telling you, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Unless we get the wisdom of the Father, yes. we're going we're gonna to struggle. Yes. We're going to struggle. Did I say love? Yes, I said love. Yes. It always comes back to that. Yes. It always comes back to love. So uh, we got to have love that is crazy love. Because people will say you're crazy yeah. to love people that hate you. Right. right, right. And people will say you're crazy or you're, you're just foolish to love people in spite of everything. I mean, in spite of the fact that they're trying to do you wrong and they're trying to, to do all these horrible things to you. But you know what? I win. When I choose to love like God loved, the way Jesus loved, then I know that I, I got it. I, I'm... I'm, I'm I'm on the right track, and I'm doing what God called me to do, not what people have told me was the right thing to do, like an eye for an eye. <laughs> Girl, I get her back. And that's back. I, got, I, got some, I got some stuff that I can get you, that I'll get them right out get, get them. You know. Yeah, I take her, I take her man. Okay. okay, let me stop it. Okay, I gotta stop it. <laughs> I gotta stay focused. I'm focused. Extreme focus. Now, but most of the time, that's how the world thinks. Yes, yes. Now we get them back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. And it's, it doesn't work. Only love works. Yeah. Love is the, the best weapon yes. that you could ever have. Yes. It's greater than all God's guns. It'll get some things straight. But there's some, but there's some things that love. Love can sometimes be a 45 caliber. <laughs> of little ladies that were accosted in their car or something like that. And these, these, these ladies began to minister to them. Yes. And all of a sudden these guys put their weapons down and put everything down and led them to the Lord. 
It was just, it, some of those stories are just amazing. And not all the stories end up that way. Right. But, I, but I do tell you that if you really believe in what you're, what you're doing in the, in the form of love, it can end up that way. And that's how it should end. Right. Right. Amen? That's how it should end. But it's to be a ministry of excellence. Right. Do you see it differently? Yes. Than you did before? Yes. Excellence. Properly reflecting the image of Christ. I want to be the person of excellence. Properly reflecting the image of my Savior. Right. Amen. Or the man Christ Jesus, actually. Amen. And teaching others the same. Not just in words, but in deed. Yes. Amen. 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 How about you? Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Amen. Well, that is the end of my message. Hallelujah. And I look forward to listening to you next Great week. Work. Great work. A little bit more time, Tina? Oh, I do have a little bit more time. I want to open up the floor for those of you that, if you're struggling with a decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, because it is the biggest decision you could ever make. And I don't want to leave here in a in, in a message without giving people opportunity because I see new faces right. and I see I, I, I don't know where you're at in your in your walk with Christ. But I want to give you opportunity and space. You know, a lot of times we say people close your eyes and raise your hand. But you know, when you know you know. Right. And there's something that pulls you out of your comfort zone and says, I'm making this decision. Mm -hmm. How you say like Fred? I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. You know, nobody gonna stop me from going. Right. I'm going. I'm going to see Jesus. I'm going to meet him. And I'm going to live my rest of my life with him. And we're going to do this together. Because I'm tired of doing it by myself. And he wants to be the Lord of your life. If you want him to be the Lord of your life and you have not made that decision yet, I want you to come down here. You know, and and let's do it. Let's get the job done. Let's 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 begin to change this. And you know what? If everybody in here is saved, huh, we need to invite some more people to church. Amen. We need to be inviting some friends to church. Amen. We need to we know some people that need Jesus. We know some people that need yes. Jesus. Yes, yes. And we I want you to I want you to tell them there's a place that's gonna teach you about Jesus Christ. And how to be strong in your faith. And be sure that you are going to be a soon coming Savior. Yes. And so, if everybody, everybody here safe? Everybody good? I'm going. I'm going. No struggles with your salvation? No struggles? You good? You good? You good? You good? Do I need some more time? You need to come to cricket this a little bit more. Um, what 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 was it? The uh, what what does uh, Pastor wants to say? If I wouldn't say, if I wouldn't say, I guess say. What would I do it right now? And where would I do it? Right now. Right now. Because you know tomorrow's not promised, and you know you don't want to be a doom thing. You know doom you know, doomsayer, all that kind of stuff. But you know it's just not. And I want to know, and I want to be secure in where I'm going. Yeah. And I want to see Jesus one day. Yeah. And I want him to say, well done, even if it was only five minutes before. <laughs> five minutes before I get the chance to see him. He said, well done. You did it. You made the decision. Are we good? All right. I just want to say this. That's what was talking about uh, Raymond, the usher at uh, Carry the Faith. And uh, when she said that, 
I can remember Raymond when he was there. Raymond's gone on to be with the Lord now, but I can remember when he was there, he would say that. She'd be walking in and he'd say, it comes to you, he'd say it loud. Robert Case and loud, you feel me? <laughs> Robert's not here. But, but I'm gonna tell you something. When she said it, some of y'all hit a hit a what kind of point, Chris? Choke point. Because you cannot right now in your natural mind see how anybody could equate you to Jesus. I'm gonna give you a scripture to read. It's up to you to read it. John 17. You need to read the whole chapter, but John 17. John 17. Verses 20 to 23 in particular. Read the whole chapter. Read the whole chapter. It's homework. But you need that. Yeah, it's homework. She's a homework for you. <laughs> because Jesus prayed, and, I, and I, the Lord is real. I was just talking to another pastor the other day, and the real Lord is, this is, this is going, listen to me well. As you write it down, John 17, verses 20 through 23. Read the whole chapter. Okay? But I believe, listen to me well. And I say this by the Spirit of the Lord, because he's really been working on me, and I know he's working on some other, other ministries all over the planet. Not just, whenever God gives revelation, he gives it to one place, he gives it all over. Okay? You should be getting it too, if you're, if you're here. But this, is a, this I know. And that one of the main, if not the main reason why Jesus has not come back yet, is because of that prayer that you find in that passage. He said, make us one. Yes. You and I, Father, are one. Yes. Okay? Now, what I'm believing for, from not just for this congregation, but for every person that calls upon the name of Jesus Christ as Lord. It's oneness. I'm tired of the spirit of division trying to trying to rape our planet and rape our, our churches and just accost us and beat us down. It ain't happening at that point. I'm telling you what I know. So you meditate on that. You get that in your heart. So for all of you that struggle with that, because you got an identity crisis, it is not you, it is Christ in you that is your hope of glory. We are, we, are, we are vessels. We are, we are what, did, what did Paul say in, in, in 1 Corinthians? He says, he says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power would be of God. Not of man. It's not us. When you deny. Like she could have done. I'm not. And in her flesh, in her mind, she couldn't wrap her mind around that. But you say that to her now. She ain't going to rebuke you. She ain't going to shut you down. Come on. Bring them all. Come on. I, 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 I'm, I'm serious about this. I want to be God walking, baby. Amen. He is God the Father. He is God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. I'm God Tommy, his representative in the earth. I can't claim anything other than what he's put in me. Now you read that. Some of you might think, well, you know, who do you think you are? I know who I am. I'm not thinking. I'm a son of the Most High God. And Jesus said, Jesus said, Lord, show them that you love me just like you love me. Love them just like you love me. Now you got to see that by revelation, by faith. Okay? You all right? Didn't she do a masterful job? Thank you, Lord. Thank you all for, for being attentive and coming out and braving this little room and to our first time guests. It's cold in here. Oh, my God. I got a jacket on. I'm cold, so, you know. But uh, I, I, would, I would appreciate your, your prayers of faith. Um, I have a slight medical procedure that I have to go through on tomorrow, uh, so I will be out of um, this. <laughs> So if you text me, you call me, you don't get a response. So you can call my wife, call the office, and I'll get back with you. I'll be fine. It's going to be easy. It's outpatient. But it is necessary. So it also requires me to stand down for a little while. Amen. But boy, August is coming. Yes. Glory to God. And the power of God is, is certainly here. And she is, she is, my goodness. We're going to chew on this one for a while. Yes. I took some good notes. I hope you did. Join hands with somebody, if you would, please. We want to make sure that nobody ever leaves this place. Whether it's in this place, whether it's in the Kinnick room where we'll be next Sunday, the main ballroom, or whether it's really in our future sanctuary, I never want to get to the point where it's not important for us to touch somebody. Amen? The hand that you hold to your left or your right is a miracle, a living, breathing, walking, talking miracle. And whether you know them or not, or whether you know their situation or not, know this about them, that the same God that they love 
is the same God that you love. You say, well, I'm not sure of that. Yeah, you can be sure of that. Why? Because they decry that Jesus Christ is Lord. So you say, well, what do you, you don't even have to ask him, but you can say this in the spirit. For those of you that are not spirit filled, we can get you spirit filled. It's not hard and nor is it complicated. It's simply receiving the gift that Jesus gave us, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, but those of you that have a prayer language, would you just pray just for a moment, very softly, and just pray for that hand, that left hand, that right hand. For those of you that are not filled with the spirit, just say this, just bless them, Lord. Bless them. Bless them in ways that they just simply, uh, that just cause them to just fall out under your presence. Bless them, Lord, in ways that I don't understand, but you do. Do things for them, Father, behind the scenes. Change their mind. Change the circumstance. Change the situation. Send healing to their homes. Send deliverance to a family member, God. Lord, to a co-worker. Let them be blessed by your presence. Say something good about them, because they need you. We need one another. The Bible says that we are helpers of one another. We as, we're not islands unto ourselves. So Father, by the authority of God, you, you, I'm talking about you, each one of you, not me, you, you are an influencer, a changer. You are a world impactor. You should be impacting and influencing somebody. Be filled this morning. Take what you've gotten this morning to somebody. Don't just sit on it. Don't just go eat a, eat a lunch and not impact somebody, but take it during the week and remember it and let it come to your mind and say, you know what? You are somebody. You are somebody special. You do mean something to God. Tell them, you know, tell them that, that, that I'm going. I'm going. I'm, where I'm going, you need to go. Jesus prayed that. You can pray it. Jesus said, where I'm going, you know, there will you also be. Say it to him. Are you, do you know where you're going? What does that mean? Well, I'm telling you, I'm going to a place that has been prepared by my Father for me. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. But I'm making preparation. Because one day I will leave this earth. Are you ready? Are you going? Tell somebody. Influence their life. Make the hard question part of your reality. And watch God do what he does. So I extend my prayers, God, through all of the people. Lord, through six degrees of separation and beyond. I thank you, God, that many people are impacted by the hands that I hold today. Lord God, young, old, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, and others, Lord God, are blessed and impacted by me through you. You are the one, Lord, that used me. Talking about you. Let me touch their lives. Thank you for my sister, for my brother today. We give you praise. We'll be back again, God, at the appointed time. During the week, God, we're just, we just call forth a blessing. Lord God, on David and Stephanie Roberts and many others that are not here, we call forth the blessing of the Lord, and we just thank you for it. The blessing of the Lord is making rich and adds no sorrow with it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.